Well, I wanted to uh, fasten the tabletop before I finished it. So um, I debated whether or not I wanted to use just plain glue blocks or use a more modern method to allow for expansion. The um, original one had all glue, glue blocks on it. And of course that would probably uh, allow it to split. So I'm gonna do something similar but allow it to uh, expand. So what I'm gonna do is use glue blocks here. I'll have six of them, two on each uh, of the sides here. And then I put a screw hole in it so that, um, and it's elongated on this side so that it can move. Uh, so the screw doesn't fit tight into the uh, the hole, but it'll only go about five eighths into a three quarter inch top. So uh, that should allow for movement, expansion of the the table. So it should be less likely the, to to uh, crack, uh, and it's somewhat traditional. Well, after uh, sanding it to 180, I uh, wet it down with. Uh, warm water and raise the grain and after which then I sanded off the after dried I sanded off the fuzzies with a 220 grit paper then I um, wiped it down to get all the dust off and uh, now I've applied the first coat of uh, Charles Neal's uh, pre-color conditioner which I had uh, done on the practice board so now this needs to dry uh, about take about an hour and then if there are fuzzies then we need to rub it off with uh, 320 grit sandpaper always getting finer and uh, once we get it smooth again then we'll wipe it down and then i'll apply another coat of charles neal's uh, pre-color conditioner and then uh, i'll wait overnight and then tomorrow uh, we'll be ready to apply the dye So after I applied the dye, it was too dark, and uh, I was really disappointed in the way it got applied. So I took a wet rag and uh, wiped it down. Kept uh, since it's a water-based dye, you can lighten it by using a wet rag and uh, trying to get it even. So I worked on it uh, all day yesterday and got it pretty even, and then uh, rubbed it out with uh, steel wool to get it uh, nice and smooth. And then of course wiped it down to get rid of the dust. So now um, I got it to the color about where I wanted it and I've applied the first coat of Waterlux. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, I'm applying the uh, second coat of Waterlux to the uh, table now and uh, the finish is starting to look like something. So, uh, my disappointment in uh, the way the color came out isn't too bad, although the, this camera doesn't uh, reproduce the color uh, particularly uh, accurately. Here's the top over here, and uh, it's coming along too. So this is the second coat, so we got quite a few more to go. All right, well, I'm continuing with the finishing here, and I've got three coats of uh, Waterlux on the uh, top and uh, it's coming along it'll take uh, five or six coats to, to build up a finish on it so between the coats uh, you can hear maybe a little bit of dust there's the dust nubs I don't uh, stay in the shop when it's wet so they reduce the amount of dust that accumulates on the tops of the shell or tops of the top <laughs> anyway uh, so I got a 600 grit and just lightly and you want to stay away from the edges because that's where it comes off the most and I just go across it you can see that it's taken off some of the finish but it's also taken off the dust nub and in the beginning I didn't used to do this between the coats and uh, I really think I get a better finish although it's tedious by doing it between the coats it only takes 
a few minutes. Now I don't sand the, the ball and claw feet. I use steel wool on that, but it do, steel wool of course doesn't take it off as well as the uh, sandpaper does. But this is now baby but smooth. So that's uh, what I do between the coats. So we'll check in when it gets finished here. Well now I'm going to apply the uh, fourth coat of Waterlux to uh, the top here. And I got a little cup that I use. And the secret to this is thin coats, many thin coats. Although that makes it rather slow to do because I only can put on one a day. And when I first started using it, I used to put on heavier coats, you know, thinking that, well, I needed to get a lot of protection on the, the wood, but uh, you run into problems with running and and it, it does dry faster, of course, when you put a thin coat on. Of course, you have to be careful not to sand through and when you're sanding between the coats through the finish because it is so thin. And eventually it uh, builds up and you get a nice smooth consistent finish and then uh, to finish it off I let it cure because air is the only thing that uh, oxygen uh, that cures water lungs and it's a mixture of tongue oil and varnish and um, so you let it harden a week maybe at least and then uh, I rub it out with either 600 grit or uh, steel wool to get it an even dull finish because it's, even though this is the original it's still highly glossy and I don't particularly care for that in my furniture so we uh, I sand it off, get it to a dull finish, and then I apply paste wax to it. So, and then I can buff it out to whatever luster that I like. So there we have it. Another coat, a oh, little thin right there. You want to get enough off so that it, or on it, so that it levels itself, and the streaks disappear. There we go. So tomorrow we'll be ready for the fifth coat. I keep trying to do the white balance uh, here to uh, the fluorescent lights that are over the workbench here are a funny color. But uh, anyway, this is about the right color, uh, as you can see. So that's with the fourth coat on there. So tomorrow we'll add number five and uh, slowly build up the finish. Well the table's uh, finished except for uh, rubbing out and a coat of wax. Uh, I'll rub it out uh, with either uh, 600 wet dry sandpaper on the uh, flat parts and then use uh, the Libron 4 aught steel wool on the curved uh, parts but uh, came out pretty good. I set the white balance on the camera to uh, see if you could uh, actually see the the color finally uh, but uh, I like it. So uh, other than it's being too shiny right now uh, it's ready to go. On to the next project.